Hello students, how are you doing today? You are doing great. Our topic for today that's unit 11, increasing your vocabulary power. That is a part of vocabulary. How do you build your vocabulary power? Our issue for today that's describing data showing comparisons. So, what are the words which help us to describe our graph? Before I start talking about this issue, let's going to be familiar with some of the words which are very important while we are talking about describing or comparing the graphs. Good. There are different types of graphs is over that. Yeah, you are familiar about this graph. The first one that is, is a line graph, what looks like it's available in your textbook and it's available in every part of your lesson. That is what line graph means. That's to display it, change over time a series of data points, a line. It's common in your mathematics. Same time, if you are geography student, it's available there how lines are representing a graph. It's okay? And then is another kind of bar graph. It's simply to convey the relational information quickly. It's okay, the bar graph. You can compare, you can describe a graph using this bar. You are familiar. And the third one that is a pi to show percentage of whole. If you want to show the percentage of a certain data, pie chart is very important. Finally, that is stable to show the categories, okay? To show the group. So, if you think in mind about these terms or vocabularies before you are going to study important data comparison vocabularies, I'm sure that I would like to remind you all these issues in your mind. And then, let's see the language. There are very important languages of a graph, right? There is app increase, yeah, rise, grow, went up, double, exceed, very important vocabularies. These are very important parts of the language. So as to express how things are skying up, this may be depend on the context of what? The data, the context of what? The phenomenon. Therefore, these vocabularies help us to describe a graph. Whatever the graph it is, it can be a chart, pie chart, it can be that is a bar graph, a line graph, something like that. Down, when you say that down, something that is declining is okay. Drop, fall, right? Depreciate. This term implies that, right? Something which is negative. And similarly, up and down is another vocabulary which goes with this term that is like fluctuate, okay, and delete it, fluctuate. There is no stable condition. So to express this phenomenon or issues, you can use this with vocabularies. Similarly, when things are the same, yeah, in the same condition, in permanent condition, in a good situation, yeah, some important vocabularies are 
possible. As they have seen on the screen, like still, leveled off, right, remained, constant, steady, consistent, permanent, etc. These are important vocabularies to understand what is talking about, what is the implication, to understand the meaning that's written about any kind of issue, so as to describe a data, whatever the data it is, whatever the phenomena it is, right? The writer usually uses this kind of vocabularies. So while we are familiar of these vocabularies, we can or we are able to understand what the writer is talking about. So we can give our opinion or suggestion about that graph, about that description, based on the vocabulary knowledge that we have had so far. That's it. And similarly, there are expressions. You see, there are a lot of expressions. So as not only the vocabularies, the expressions by themselves do have a power to talk about what, how do we describe a graph. Very important vocabularies, as they have seen on the screen, right? The chart divided into blank parts. This is a very interesting expression to begin with what your data is talking about. The chart divided into blank parts. It may be that it's four parts. It may be that it's three parts. It may be that it's two parts. It implies that your graph might be that is a bar graph and that is a line graph. It may be that is a bar graph and that is a chart. It may be the combination of all graphs that we have seen so far. This is the expression. So expressions are very important. Similarly, dash has the largest number of Blank. You see this, uh, there is expression here now. Take for instance, okay? Nigeria has the largest number of population in Africa, for instance. You can feel it. What we give more emphasis here now is that how these expressions are important. So as to talk about what? A graph. To talk about comparison. So these two spaces imply this one. Blank is as big as blank. Similarly, you can give here now a sample example from stars. Right? There are countries, right? Their area or their size is equal with another country. It may be based on what? The population number. It's maybe that is the size of the country. It's maybe the economic progress of a country. So if you want to compare two countries or two phenomena, if they are equal status, you can use it this expression, as big as. So there is a word that comes before it and after that. It depends on the context. Whatever it is, beside the vocabularies, expressions do have great role so as to talk about comparison, describing data. Blank is twice as big as blank. Twice. So, for instance, let's take Ethiopia. At the same time, take Eritrea. So, in such a case, Ethiopia is twice as big as Eritrea, we can say, in such a way. It's a very simple example. Based on the area that they cover. Similarly, go again. It's okay in the eastern part of that is Tanzania and that is Sudan. Right? Sudan is twice as big as what? Tanzania, for instance. Possible. Based on their population number, based on their demography, okay, based on their different phenomena or contexts, these expressions are important. More than plaque percent. More than, and then you can add here now, the figure. And then after percent, there is a figure too. Only one third of, okay, our world is, okay, full of what? Full of economic status. We can see, if, if, if you like to say like that. Only one third. 
is living in a good way, in a good standard way of life, this may be. Less than half, etc. Whatever it is, all these expressions beside the vocabularies help someone to compare things using different contexts. Now, yeah, if you like, you can open just your textbook. If your book is available at your hand, which is a graph about, right? A very important question that comes in your mind. You have to ask yourself, right? Anything before you are going to read the expressions or the text or the description that is written about that graph, you have to predict what this graph is talking about. That is easy to predict what's going on. You can easily understand the description, what it's talking about. What does the vertical axis represent? What does it mean the vertical axis? Vertical axis. In mathematics, you can say that is that is y axis, right? And similarly, what does each bar represent? Is? Right? Each bar, if your graph is consisted of a bar graph, each bar graph has its own implication. It has its own meaning. What does it talking about? Which stands for? And what we do understand? The graph. What does the graph show us by itself? So all these things should come in your mind in order to understand what that graph is talking about. Now, Read the, this description of the graph on the above end. Complete it with the relevant names of regions. I'm sure that this activity is available. Good. Hopefully, this description is available in your textbook. Right? I would like to give you some time. If the graph is available at your hand, hopefully, this graph is talking about what? Simply by looking at the paragraph, you can guess. What does this description is talking about? What does this graph is talking about? Let me give you some time, and then just you think about what this graph is talking about and what this paragraph is, is talking about. In what sense does it describe the graph that is shown in your textbook on page 270?
Interesting. That's interesting, really. Very good. We solved that based on the graph that is shown on the screen. We solved that it stands for what? The way how HIV, okay, medication is going on in different parts of the world. In what way do we medicate those people who are positive in HIV AIDS? Right? In different continents. Asia is available there, it's okay. Africa is available there. Latin America is another. Different parts of the world in the, on the, in, the, in the graph is available there. So in what way these people do use this therapy? Do they all equally medicated? Yes or no? Obviously, the graph clearly shows that something. That's it. So, complete. Very nice. Good, everything is available there. It doesn't take too much time. So, good. Thank you. So, next to this, let me try to give you that, these activities. Complete the sentence with comparative forms. Comparative forms, this is a part of the activity. Still now we are talking about the bar graph that is shown on the page of your textbook. Refer so as to answer these questions. The blank number of life years added was in Western Europe and North America. The second dash number of life years added was in Sub-Saharan Africa appropriate comparative forms which help us to refer to these what these sentences similarly number three this was dash than half the number in western europe and north america number four the dash number of life years was added in the middle east and North Africa with 7,500. Five, blank years were added in Eastern Europe and Central Asia, than in the Caribbean. That's number six. Blank years were added in Eastern Europe and Central Asia than in Asia. Central Asia than Asia, Central Asia is another issue. Asia is that is another issue. It's okay. It's based on the graph that is shown in your textbook. So hopefully, and then I would like to give you the feedback to the previous activity. Yeah, go back to the paragraph, the text that I have given you so far in order to complete the information that you have got from the bar graph. These are the feedbacks. If you have done or if you did your job in such a way, that's interesting. Good. Western Europe and North America in the first blank. Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. Western Europe and North America, Latin America, Asia, these are the possible answer for the paragraph parties. I'm sure that you did your job like this. That's interesting. Good. For the last one, that is one up to six, these are the possible answers. Greatest, biggest, largest, these are comparative forms, superlative forms, right? Similarly, you can use them in such appropriate places that suits in the sentence, right? Greatest, biggest, largest. This implies that there is possible answers, right? One student may answer greatest, another may reply in such biggest, 
etc. Largest. Second one biggest. Just look at the feedbacks or the answer for the activities for data comparison. Just you can increase your work power in such a way. That is all we have for today. Till we meet next time. Goodbye, students.